What you are listening to is the plink plonk sound effect that accompanied the gameplay of Pong. Released in 1972 by Atari, the table tennis inspired game is regarded as the first financially successful video game. Its cabinets began appearing across the country, and though Atari didn't know it at the time, Pong had launched a groundbreaking new industry. Interactive entertainment had leapt from the board game and onto the screen. The sounds of Pong are not musical, but functional. The original arcade cabinet lacked any sort of musical functionality at all. In fact, the original computer lacked the processing space for it. The original 1972 sounds were instead made using a sync generator, literally manipulating the video output into audio output. The sounds are simple, meant to assist in a player's gameplay experience. The balls plink as they strike the boards, and the game buzzes to announce a point. At this point, music, if it can be considered that, functioned a lot like chant, a memorization aid meant to teach and guide a congregation in the same way the simple sounds of Pong guided the player. But it wasn't long before music would appear in video games properly. By 1981, ten years after Pong launched an industry, arcade cabinets became larger, their computers more complex, their stories more intricate. Such is the case for Namco and Midway's Galaga. A game that had you take control of a starship and shoot aliens. The game opened with a triumphant, heroic theme song, one that reappeared and was reaffected from subsequent levels. However, this theme song gives way to the same sound effect style functionality during actual gameplay. The arcade cabinet now had the capability to harmonize, but the functionality of music still took precedent over musicality. Like a medieval mass, new complexities allowed for even more artistry, but the function remained more important. This functional part of video game music was also eventually replaced. Midway's Mortal Kombat, released in 1992, featured a full soundtrack by Dan Forden. Mortal Kombat was not the first to feature such a soundtrack. Games as far back as 1980 featured continuous sound, but the game features a good balance of soundtrack and effect. Underneath the usual mechanical sounds of combat, now thronged the steady beat of drums, setting the mood and providing a film-style background to the game. Games now hired composers for their music, and soundtracks entered the era of musical ambiance. Video game music had evolved into its renaissance, and from there, music would continue to evolve alongside the available technology. Sound systems went from 8-bit chip sounds made by manipulating electronics to digital synthesizing and sampling, such as Mortal Kombat's, which continued evolving and becoming increasingly realistic to mimic real instruments. As musical systems themselves solidified, music's function in games began to shift. Music had reached the point of taking a storytelling role in games, transmitting information the same way a book or a play does. Earlier games, such as 1986's Super Metroid, focused solely on building ambiance, the low, intense music building the gritty, space opera environment of the game's world. Kenji Yamamoto's music functioned a bit like Handel's hornpipe, in the background, not necessarily emotional, but adding to the world building. This function gradually changed, and music began to take on the roles of a true art piece. Composers began working in tandem with gameplay, rather than just as an accessory. While music-focused video games were nothing new, a Journey-themed game was released in 1983, which used a cassette system to provide the complex music. It wasn't until later that music and story became intertwined. In 1998, Nintendo released The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, 
widely regarded as one of the best video games of all time, spurred on in no small part by its iconic soundtrack. In the game, Koji Kondo's music becomes an intrinsic part of the story, a part so deep it features an instrument in the title. For the first time, music is not merely a gimmick or environmental, but artistic, deep and emotional and crucial to the story. The music of Ocarina of Time was heroic, not by its sound, but by its story, in which a magical instrument in the hands of a hero changes the fate of a world. Music has continued to be an important and continuously evolving part of the video game industry. Recent years have seen even more evolution of the media, blurring the lines between art and entertainment, and music has been an important part of that evolution. Now, with recording equipment, full orchestras can be included as part of soundtracks, such as 2017's The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild which features a full orchestra as well as extensive piano solo performances. Breath of the Wild also serves as an example of the freedom developers have in the industry. In stark contrast to Ocarina of Time, Breath of the Wild returned to a more ambient soundtrack. Games have grown to reflect the musical tastes of the time, and recent years have seen a growth in rhythm games, such as 2022's Friday Night Funkin', which makes music, specifically digital and rap, its sole focus. Music in video games has entered its modern era, one that allows for the ultimate freedom for developers to use it in whatever way fits the story they are trying to tell. As technology continues to evolve and tastes shift, the industry will continue to shift with it. Or it might divulge and seek out new mediums of expression. As one last invocation of a game I think combines all of this, I'd like to turn your attention to Hollow Knight, released in 2017 by Team Cherry. Christopher Larkin utilizes a soundtrack using a digital orchestra supplemented by live soloists. The soundtrack is at times ambient and emotional, using motifs and instrumentation the same as any classical composition to weave a symphony in and out of the gameplay, telling the story of the Forgotten Kingdom through equally tragic and hopeful sounds. Larkin's masterful combining of art and function truly tells a compelling story and leads us to wonder about the future of the medium and what future stories have yet to be played. Thank you for watching.